Hey, what's you going, boys? Mike here. Welcome back to Grapey's Workshop. Boys, I'm glad you dropped in today. Help keep me warm, maybe. Put the heat on in the shop today, but it's still a little chilly. Uh, I got a maintenance job I need to do on my uh, Massey Ferguson GC 2300. Uh, I'm going to take you to the other side of the shop there and show you what's going on. So let's get at her. All right, for the past couple, three years or more, I've been noticing that the steering cylinder is loose. It, you can see it moving a lot in the little, the two little flanges that hold it in place. Uh, I'm going to show you here in the manual what we're dealing with, and then I'll show you the actual cylinder on the tractor and how much it moves. And my concern is it's moving too much, and I don't want it to break down while I'm plowing, so we're going to address that today. That's what the actual steering cylinder looks like. It's a double acting cylinder. It pushes and pulls on both ends. And there's two hydraulic line fittings on it right here. And my concern is that that cylinder is getting loose in the two flanges that hold it in place. And I'm afraid it's going to start moving around, maybe cause me some problems with those connections or hydraulic leaks. And the part that I'm interested in is these flanges right here. There's one there and there's one right here. It's, it's kind of ghosted out on the drawing because it's, a, it's the same as, as this. Two bolts hold that in place and that goes in over the end of the cylinder and between the two of them they secure the cylinder to keep it from moving. So what I'm thinking is the holes in, inside these uh, flanges are getting wore out and then the body of the piston now is slopping around inside that. So let's go look at the tractor and I'll show you how much they're moving around there. All right, there's the cylinder right there and there's the flange I'm talking about. Two bolts hold that on and it holds the end or the body of the piston. Uh, it goes through this uh, universal joint to the tie rod and the tie rod is connected of course to the steering knuckle or the steering uh, wheel here, the wheel and it pushes and pulls and steers it. So I'm going to start the tractor up and I'm going to cycle this back and forth a few times and you'll see just how much that uh, cylinder body moves inside this flange. see that moves around a fair amount in there so my plan is to change those. So what I like to do before I start any kind of a job is check it to see if I'm capable to do it. You know, I, I can do a lot of things but there's some jobs I just won't do because I know I can't do them and there's nothing worse than getting halfway done to a job realizing that all you've done has made it worse and now you have to button it up as best you can and take it to the repair shop and the repair shop well they won't be happy with the mess you made of the job before you brought it in so you know what I try to do is determine can I do this when I look at this I see there's uh, two flanges two bolts in each flange and as long as that flange will fit over the steering knuckle and the tie rod I think I'll be laughing and this should be a pretty straightforward job so I think I can do it Okay, first thing we have to do is take this cotter pin out. Something like that. Now, take this off. My concern is, I hope I can get this uh, ball joint out. That was what I was afraid of, eh? Alright, so what I'm going to try and do is uh, take this flange off and see if that'll uh, allow me to wiggle that tie rod end a little to get it out of there. I would have thought that that tie rod end would come right out, but there we go thinking again. All right, that's loose. I don't recommend that that be the way you remove tie rods. <laughs> okay, after a lot of uh, heartache, 
we got this loose. So now we can take our flange and look at that. It fits right over it. So <laughs> that was the easy part getting the flange off. <laughs> and if we compare the two flanges, they are identical. So that's good. So this goes on over there and it fits over that steering knuckle really good. And then it goes on the end of the cylinder. Put a bolt in it. Sometimes it's easier said than done. Looks like there's a hole there. I ended up having to jack up the tractor so I could get a good swing with the hammer to hit the bottom of that ball joint. And I was scared to death that uh, I was going to damage the threads on it. But we managed to get it. Doesn't seem to be fitting in there just quite right. <clears throat> All right. Now we'll try this again. It's not fitting in there just right. How come? That's what I'd like to know. All right, we're going to try and put this flange on again. Please, everybody, hold your nose the right way. Snug that guy up. Snug that guy up. Get my uh, ball joint in place. So I put the lock washer on here. And then the nut on here. So we're going to put this in here fairly tight. There we go. All right, so that's pretty tight. But now we have to line up. This is a castellated nut. So we have to line up one of these holes. So we can put the cotter pin back in. And I think if we just back it back that much, that looks like it might work right there. There we go. pulls down around there. I'll just fold that guy up out of the way. And there. Now, just trying to tighten up these flange bolts here. There. Okay, so that's that. I'm going to try and get this one off now. Pull this cotter pin out of here. And we'll see now if this one comes off any easier. It certainly wasn't tight. But then again, it doesn't have to be real tight, does it? Look at that. Look at how easy that one came out. Oh boy, the other one was so hard, eh? Uh -huh. 
so I'll take this flange off here and put this new flange on. These bolts, the bottom bolt here is longer than the top one because the bottom bolt goes into a little flange on the side of that cylinder to help locate the cylinder. So it's important to remember that. goes on a lot easier than the other one, eh? Now we have to line up these holes to get a cotter pin in them. That should go in there. Just a little like that. And I'll turn around there. So I'm going to just uh, start the tractor now and see how tight the cylinder is now in those new flanges. Ah, that's a lot better. I like that. Okay, I'm just cleaning up these uh, flanges here off the power steering. These are the old ones. And uh, just to see how wore they are, basically, I want to look at this. And this is the one from the uh, left hand side. And if you look around that, right in here there's a little bit of a shoulder starting to show. I don't know whether you can see that. Right in there. See there's a ridge there, but it's not much of one. But the rest of the flange, well no, there's a little bit of a ridge there too. So it looks like like 180 degrees opposed, there's a little bit of a flange. But now this one is on the uh, right hand side of the tractor. And if you look at that, there's quite a little flange built up in there. When I say flange, quite a little shoulder I should say, built up right around there. And again, 180 degrees away, not as bad, but still built up there. So they were wore, not totally wore out. I don't know that uh, it was imperative that they be changed like right now this instant. But they certainly were getting loose and I was afraid what was going to happen. So now they're new, now they're changed. I don't have to worry. Alright, we, uh, we got the job done. We got those new flanges put on the steering cylinder. And it's nice and solid now so I have no problems about going out and plowing snow. You can snow all at once. I feel confident that this is a good repair. Uh, when I first looked at it, it looked, you know, like it was going to be pretty straightforward. And it was straightforward. I think it's a simple job. But I had trouble getting that tie rod into part. And if you run into problems like that, you have to expect that sort of thing. That you're going to end up with a bump in the job somewhere. But anyways, we got her out, finally. We got that tie rod out. And uh, had some problems getting the other flange in because there was a top side and a bottom side to it. But, you know, if you take your time and uh, <laughs> pay attention to what you're doing, you can eliminate a lot of those problems. Guaranteed. Anyways, I hope you liked this little video about fixing the power steering flanges on my uh, GC2300 Massey Ferguson tractor. We're all set for snow. Take care, folks. I sure hope you enjoyed the video. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm so glad you dropped by. And I hope you come back often. In the meantime, I want everybody to have a great week. Stay safe. We'll talk to you.